you can't really play the oboe well until you can make reeds well, but you can't make reeds well until you can play the oboe well. All oboists, I don't care how good you are or bad you are, every oboist in the world is sort of three scrapes away from total disaster. Notes not coming out. Sounding like you're a beginner. I liken it to hitting a nail in the center of a glass coffee table. Either you hit the nail or you don't hit the nail. And if you don't hit the nail... Is that good read? Is that good read? Good boy! Is that good read? I'm Jonathan Fisher. I'm principal oboist of the Houston Symphony. A lot of these pieces won't make a read. It's critical that they lay flat on the table. This doesn't have a flat spot, so that's a goner. This is a goner. <laughs> this one's good. We're making our instrument every day from a piece of vegetable material. It's a piece of grass. It's a cane. It's a rondodonix. Kind of using the same technology that's been used for a couple of hundred years. And that there's something very beautiful about that. It hasn't changed much. So it's very artisanal in the tradition and it's handed down teacher to student, teacher to student. If you don't soak them, they'll crack when you start to make them. The fibers have to be supple and bendable. They change constantly, all the time. While you're playing on them, they change. The opening is a certain size and as you're playing on them and tonguing on them, you're kind of beating up, the tip is very thin and delicate, and you're sort of beating up the tip, tonguing on it. And the aperture, the opening of the reed gets smaller and smaller as you play. So you're sort of dealing with, it's like a moving target as you play, it changes. It sounds like it's so different. It's a nightmare, oh, basically, yeah. <laughs> individual oboist makes their reeds for them, for their embouchure, for their body, for their concept of sound, for the way they blow. Everything that we do is invisible. Other people can hold this a certain way. We can't, we can't see any of the production of the instrument, so it's very conceptual, and everyone has to make a reed that fits their concept of that. And so every oboist sounds pretty different from one another, and it's a very individual and personalized instrument. I think that makes it very similar to the human voice, which of course is the most personal instrument of all.